Guten Tag. Buenas tardes a todos. This is so exciting to see people from all over the place, your faces and your names popping up. We have people from all around the country as far away as Germany. There may be other countries, I think in South America. I, can't, I can only tell from some names, but it will be nice if you send us some uh, notes on the chat, the private chat, that would be really cool. Um, we have hit 100 people, and so some people are trying to sign on, but we will have this recorded uh, so you could also see it again, um, uh, hear it again. So first of all, welcome to High Ridge House. This is the Christian Science Sanctuary for Healing and Renewal in the New York City area. We are so pleased to offer a monthly metaphysical meeting for our, now we've opened it up to the community and to the world because this is part of our gift of inspiration for all of you. And today we are blessed to have Libby Jones, a Christian science practitioner from Nevada City, California. Libby has spent her life living, loving, and sharing the effectiveness of Christian science. And she has a most amazing journey and stories to share with us of healing. And um, she has had a very um, and diverse career background and has found herself now in the full-time public practice of Christian science. She is married to the one and only Robin Jones that many of you know. He has his own blog, spot, blog every Friday through Albert Baker Fund, a uh, career partner with High Ridge House. Um, if you are not signed on for that, please sign up. It's an amazing thing. It's every Friday as well and helps a lot of our young people. So that's a little plug for Robin Jones. Um, they, uh, with their seven children that they have raised in Christian science, they are just a most amazing couple and have nurtured and mentored a lot of young people. And I got to know Libby Jones through her mother, Doris Goff, a former Christian science nurse and also now a Christian science um, practitioner. Without much further ado, uh, I would love to introduce Libby Jones. The title of her metaphysical talk is Being a Vessel. Much love to everyone. And if you're not signed up, sh share the word. People can sign on and join our uh, website. Libby, take it away. Okay, I think I can hear you now. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, we had a little, I think that was on my side, but I think we're good. It, it just it just happened as, as soon as you started talking. So I think we're all good now. So I'm sorry I missed the, um, the introduction <laughs> completely, but I'm grateful to be here. Thank you, Maravik, for inviting me to speak today. And um, are you ready to get started? Okay. And to everyone watching or listening in, I'm so grateful you're here today. I'm gonna to jump right in and talk to you about being a vessel and what that means to be a vessel. A vessel is a container or a holder of some kind like a jar or a box or a, box or a bottle of milk. And another definition for it can be a large boat like an ark. And if we think about the spiritual significance of a vessel, we would see the unlimited capacity of qualities of God with which to identify, qualities to cherish for ourselves or for others, to affirm the truth and claim dominion over error of any name. A vessel is also the first line of defense to protect its contents like armor. And the makeup of a spiritual vessel is God governed. true examples of being a vessel and as we read and study them they inspire us and remind us of how we can feel the power of divine love right now you might already be thinking of some of your favorites as i as i mentioned that on page 130 in divine in in science and health with the key to the scriptures by mary baker eddy it says christian science properly understood would disabuse the human mind of material beliefs which war against spiritual facts. And these material beliefs must be denied and cast out to make place for truth. You cannot add to the contents of a vessel already full. And she goes on to say, the central fact of the Bible 
in it is the superiority of spiritual over physical power. Sorry, I'm a little dry. Being a vessel is a way to trust God, divine mind, to be the reference point in answering questions or concerns as we pray. It means that when we pray, we are being receptive and expectant. When we reach out to God, we are humble and unselfish, and we acknowledge that divine love will lead the way. The idea of being a vessel has been something I've used in metaphysics for quite a while. It is a good resource or platform for me when I pray because it helps me let go of the human imposition and limited perspectives and go to God with a deeper sense of trust and a loving feeling of freedom that removes fear and really makes me feel comforted. Being a vessel lets me put my hand in my father, mother, God's hand, so to speak, and let the divine parent show me the way. I'll tell you about an experience I had using this idea of being a vessel and how it has impacted my life since then. On the day my husband Robin and I were preparing for our second son to arrive, we were also making preparations for our first home birth experience. We had been working with a Christian science practitioner and a midwife throughout the pregnancy and had made arrangements for a Christian science nurse who specialized in baby cases to attend the birth and then stay with us for four consecutive days afterwards to help care for the baby and me. The Christian science nurse we hired lived locally and as divine love would have it, she was the Christian science practitioner who trained other Christian science nurses to have specialized training to work in baby cases. She was also training a nurse at that time who was able to be with us for her first baby case. It was my first personal experience working with Christian science nurses, but it wouldn't be my last. As we sat at the kitchen table, talking and eating lunch, I had expressed some limiting views about what I could or couldn't do that day while I waited for the baby to arrive. Although I had been born at home myself and heard the harmonious story of my arrival my whole life, I had taken on some limiting expectations. After hearing some of the concerns, the nurse shared with us some metaphysical ideas that helped uplift my thought. She said, think of yourself as a vessel. You're simply a container for this spiritual idea until it needs to be somewhere else. She explained that when we pour out, <clears throat> excuse me, pour out of the bottle, the bottle doesn't scream or cry or change shape as a result of holding the milk or pouring it out. It's simply a vessel doing its job. It isn't scarred or marred in any way. It doesn't have to have any adverse effects to overcome. And it remains in its original shape when the milk is gone. She reminded me that both the baby and I were divine ideas or children of God, and that we were both untouched by human limitations, impositions, speculation, and limited perspectives. In Science and Health, we read, clad in the panoply of love, human hatred cannot reach you. This statement has been one of the ideas that I had been praying with, and I would often expound on it by including some other words after human hatred. To read, clad in the panoply of love, human hatred, fear, speculation, limitations, opinions, cannot reach you or impact you in any way. I realized I had already been living that concept of being a vessel from lessons I learned as a Christian science Sunday school student, Examples of being a vessel in the Bible stories and Mrs. Eddy's writings taught me how to, how to make it relatable to everyday life. And those were conversations I thought about. But the reminder now that I could use it in this deeper way was so valuable to me. I continued to cherish this conversation with the nurse and the, ideas, the idea of being a vessel that day. It really added to the many prayerful ideas I had been working with already in previous months, and I was so grateful for this inspired thought. It was kind of like the icing on the cake for me. Turning to Christian science as our approach for preventative and effective healthcare treatment each day, we had been metaphysically preparing and defending our thought and act of work for this experience. We started with God, divine love, our father, mother, as the divine parent for me, this child, my husband, our children, and household. 
being a vessel, removed the belief of the burden of a mortal birth. It lifted the belief of burden of a mortal having a mortal to live with other mortals in a household with limited capacity, ability, income, time, comfort, joy. For me, it took my physicality out of the metaphysical equation as I thought more about how I looked at my role as a mom, a woman, a wife, a girl who held to her divine innocence and purity, untouched by human hypothesis. I was able to incorporate the idea of being a vessel to hold my thought to a higher standard, an expectation and see intended results. Soon we received our son and it was quick and harmonious and both of us were free from any cause, concern or pain. We continued to cherish metaphysical ideas with the Christian Science nurse who had us as her first baby case for the next four days. It was a wonderful experience having her in our home and we felt her supportive and alert thought and conscious efforts and activity. When the nurse left on the fourth day, she said she thought she would be making an impact on our family through her training and supportive metaphysical thought, but that she had received as much support and cherished prayerful ideas from us and she thought she would, that she thought she would be giving. We are so grateful for the growth and grace from this experience and have held it in our hearts every day. Being a vessel allows us to go to God as the source of everything. It reminds us that God is our parent too. So whatever we need to do, we can do, not just without harm to ourselves, but knowing that we will be blessed and a blessing as well. Along with those two boys, my husband and I had five more children, all at home using a Christian science practitioner, a midwife, and a Christian science nurse for each experience. Prayerful preparation, receptivity, expectancy for harmonious and painless childbirth for each child was demonstrated. We held to the idea of being a vessel, removing daily impositions by declaring God's dominion and letting divine love fill my thought. Now, actually twice, the midwife didn't make it to our house until after the baby was born. Faced with this, we held to the fact that our household was governed and sustained by the kingdom of heaven where harmony reigns. With our fourth child, my husband quickly learned the skills of being a midwife at 1.30 in the morning and had the help of our 10-year-old son who said God woke him up. I remember our son walking out to the hall to get towels from the linen closet and coming back to my room singing Shepherd Show Me How to Go, one of his favorite hymns from the Christian Science Hymnal. They were being vessels. The second time when our youngest son arrived, the midwife, when our, sorry, our youngest child arrived, the midwife was on her way. So my husband and my mom, who at the time was a Christian Science nurse, were there to receive our youngest child. She arrived with the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck twice. Her little wrist and was but between the cord and her neck, allowing her to breathe. And boy, was I grateful she heard that angel message to put her arm there until her dad could help her. As soon as he saw it, he said, that's not right. And he quickly untangled her. She was kept in the everlasting arms of love and didn't suffer one bit. They were being vessels. In thinking about what I mentioned earlier where Mary Baker Eddy writes about not being able to fill a vessel already full, awareness of impositions as you recognize them is vital. On page 99 in Science and Health, it says, the calm, strong currents of true spirituality, the manifestations of which are health, purity, and self-immolation must deepen human experience until the beliefs of material existence are seen to be a bald imposition and sin, disease, and death give ever pl everlasting place to the scientific demonstration of divine spirit and to God's spiritual perfect man. Our family grew to having seven children and we had opportunities to use Christian science every day and teach them how to apply it in everything they were doing. 
Our days were usually pretty active, but we made time in the mornings for reading the lesson together and to discuss the spiritual takeaways so they had some little morsels to think about throughout their day. One of our other fun morning activities after the lesson with the kids was doing our daily identification. In truth, this activity was usually done in the car on the way to school or church, since it was a good quiet space for us to be together for about 15 minutes before the day got going. I'll share more about that in a minute, but real quick for some who may not know, in Christian science, Mrs. Eddy teaches the importance of doing our daily prayerful defense work. For instance, in the church manual, we are given a rule for motives and acts, daily prayer, and alertness to duty. In Science and Health, and in her other writings, she gives directives to defend ourselves each day, like the Lord's Prayer, the scientific statement of being. And line 30 on page 442 says, Christian scientists, be a law to yourselves that mental malpractice cannot harm you when asleep or when awake. Throughout her writings, we find more supportive directives teaching us to stand porter and claim our dominion over animal magnetism. So my husband and I agreed it was important to give this, this spiritual tool of daily defense to the children early on in their understanding of living Christian science. This daily exercise helps them understand their spiritual identity as a child of God and their expectation and demonstration of their relationship with God. As parents, we couldn't be with them all the time. So having a good relationship with God as their divine parent was really important to us. For them to know God as their divine parent provided immediate comfort to them because they knew they could reach out, have a conversation, pray wherever they were during their day or night, and hear God's angel messages, feeling a larger sense of protection and safety, and knowing that God's love would always provide the answers they need. This daily activity begins from Mrs. Eddy's definition of God in the chapter Recapitulation on page 465, where she answers the question, what is God? She says God is incorporeal, divine, supreme, infinite mind, spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, love. Mrs. Eddy's biblically-based synonyms are the qualities we identify with when we do our daily identification. Now, originally, Robin and I were taught to do this as a daily written exercise and to identify with each synonym every day. In teaching the kids, however, we let them each choose a synonym each day. We had seven children. There were seven synonyms. It seemed a good fit. They took turns picking a synonym and choosing four or five qualities they wanted to express that day that exemplified that synonym. They would recite the second part, which established their dominion over qualities with which they did not want to identify. Then together, we would finish with a statement that sealed these truth-affirming acknowledgments. This is what that sounded like. I'm so grateful to be at one with love, and I express joy, patience, kindness, courage, forgiveness, brotherhood, sisterhood, freedom, understanding, willingness, intelligence, peace, friendship. And I have dominion over sadness, impatience, unkindness, fear, anger, frustration, misunderstanding, unwillingness, forgetfulness, confusion, hate. After all of us had taken a turn, we would say together, and these are laws unto our day. I'm so grateful to be unwilling, and I express, and I have dominion over, and these are laws unto my day. We watched them decide for themselves what words to choose, and were taken back sometimes when we saw their self-awareness at such young ages. They could be pretty specific about aligning their thought with good qualities and claiming their dominion over error. They knew what kinds of challenges they were facing each day, and they liked being armed with love. But don't get me wrong, these were kids. So sometimes there was rebellion among the crew. Error was looking for a way in, but you know what happened? 
If someone, usually a little one, didn't want to do their daily identification, an older sibling would ask them if they could do it for them. And they would almost always say yes. And as the older sibling started to say it, the little one would watch and listen and sometimes hold their sibling's hand and start saying it with them. Or just give them a smiling thank you for loving them enough to help them start their day removing error. At one point, a Disney movie had just come out about a horse named Spirit, and it was a favorite with the kids. So every now and then, there would be an argument over which synonym they chose, because three or four of them would want to do Spirit on the same day. I mean, we just had to laugh at how Error tried to find ways to creep in and disrupt. But we came to a diplomatic solution and carried on. Some of you might ask me if the older kids, some in high school and middle school, might shy away from this activity, but love, divine love is ageless. Once our daughter had a friend sleep over on a Saturday night and she went to the same Sunday school, so we were headed to church and started um, our daily identification. And we asked her if she'd ever done it or heard of it. And she said no, but that she would like to learn it. And she jumped right in and loved it. Some people may do this a little differently, and that's okay. This is just an example of what worked for our family. What's important is that you know you can align your thought with God's qualities, claim your dominion over worldly beliefs and labels, and then you can do it just the right way for yourself, holding to your spiritual identity and finding greater freedom. You're being a vessel. Now I'll give you a couple of examples of, of how that idea of being a vessel was lived. When our oldest son was about 18, he called and told us he had traded his truck for a motorcycle. He was just a few states away from where we were living and decided to drive it home to show it to us. He was really excited to have that motorcycle. But this motorcycle was a little heavier on the road than he had originally realized. The 12 hour bike ride started off pretty well. He had to stay very alert during the ride and he was ready to get home. Now this is before cell phones and GPS were in every pocket. It had gotten dark outside and for about four hours and, and about four hours away from the house, he found himself in a torrential downpour. High winds, raining cats and dogs, something had happened to his back tire and he was soaking wet. He pulled over at a rest stop for a while, trying to wait it out to let the storm pass a little bit, but it didn't seem to be letting up, so he decided to keep on going. By that time, the road was full of 18 wheelers, so he drifted between trucks, big splashes of water, and he told us later that he thought this might not have been one of his best ideas. His goal was to get down the road and get home safely. So he turned to God in prayer and sang hymns that he had learned as a child. Mrs. Eddy's hymns are recognized as Christian science treatments. They're so healing and comforting, and he knew them by heart. Like David going, going towards Goliath, he knew he had his armor on. He opened his thought to let divine love guide him, protect him, and all those on the road around him. And he sang. For four hours, he sang. Unconcerned for how he was being viewed by passerbyers, he sang loudly and confidently. And as he sang, the thunder stopped, the rain softened. And when he pulled up to the house, we met him outside, and he pulled into the driveway and turned off his bike, leaned it on its kickstand, reached over and took one of his boots off and poured out a boot full of water onto the, onto the ground and said, thank goodness for Mrs. Eddie's hymns. He was being a vessel. Another example is one year when our middle daughter was in high school, she was playing on the soccer team. We were on the sidelines of a game and as we watched her play with her usual vigorous spirit and tenacity, we saw that her face was getting kind of red, a little redder than usual for her. We had parents coming over to us and asking us if she was okay and 
we went over to the coach and talked to him about it. And he said he had called her, called to her to see if she wanted to take a break, but she didn't. She wanted to stay in and support her teammates. I could see her talking out loud when she was out on the playing field, and it didn't look like she was talking to her teammates, but I felt directed to start praying to support her. Soon the game ended, and we went over to her and the team as she grabbed some water to see if she needed anything. We asked her if she was okay, and some of the other parents came to check on her as well. And she said she was fine and thanked everyone who asked and had a big smile on her face. As we walked to the car with her, we asked her if she was talking to her teammates out on the field. I could see and hear her talking, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. She laughed and said, no, I was talking to error. <laughs> she said during the game, she started to feel bad, but she really liked playing with her friends and didn't want to take a break. They were on a mission in the game as a team and she wanted to be a part of it. So she said, she started saying the scientific statement of being, a prayer she had learned growing up that can be found in science and health. And it states, there is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance and matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. She said, I really started to feel bad, so I just started saying it out loud so I could hear the truth. And I just kept saying it until I felt better. And she said at one point, of the, one of the opposing players gave her a funny look and ran in a different direction from her, but she just kept on saying it. On the field, in the midst of competition, she turned to acknowledge God's care with receptivity and expectation. She was being a vessel. Now I told you at the beginning that the baby case was my first experience with Christian Science nurses, but not my last. Our children grew up valuing Christian Science nurses all around the country. They knew about them from visiting one of their grandmother from one of their grandmothers um, who they would visit and she was a Christian science nurse and at working at nearby facilities and they would get to visit with her. She also traveled near and abroad and so they got to hear stories about her um, her work in, in certain ways. They got to know them at their Christian science summer camps in school and college. They knew them as church friends who supported their extracurricular activities. They knew they could go to the nurse's station and find someone who would help remove impositions, wrap them up in healing expectancy, remind them of their spiritual freedom and uplift their thought just by being there, metaphysically prepared and trained to know just what to do. I incorporated ideas from nurses training in our household like recognizing the spiritual significance of the physical activity. That was a big help for me because it explained, it helped me explain how simple things like, as a mom, saying to the kids, um, making your bed or cleaning the bathroom, taking care of an animal or doing the dishes, were more than what they seemed. They were expressions of those seven synonyms. They were qualities of obedience, order, discipline, thoughtfulness, generosity, joy. Now that might sound like a mama trick to you, but these were life skills in thought and deed. We talked about how important it was to keep track of our thoughts, stand porter and be obedient to right activity. Think to your angel messages. It's another to do what they say. One of my favorite Bible verses is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in the Bible. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. As we talked about how to live this Bible verse, I would say, God loves a joyful giver and you will reap the blessings of your good activity because obedience is protection. One time, 
one of the children started to fuss about something and get all kind of cranky about whatever they were being asked to do. And I stopped them really quickly and said, uh-uh, remember, you claimed dominion over that this morning in your daily identification. And they turned around and looked at me and said, you're right, I did. Thanks for that reminder. And then they bounded off with a smile. That response was the Christ light shining in the darkness, attempted darkness. And, we and as we recognize truth in that divine light, error has no power. Christian science nurses have helped them bandage up and see the clarity of their expression after skateboard crashes and bike races, car accidents, sports collisions, and provided equipment so they could get around their school campus while seeing their healing. For the last four years, I have served on the board at the, a Christian science facility called Olive Glen in Sacramento, California. I've attended several conferences around the country supporting Christian science nurse, the Christian science nursing field. And it has been such a blessing to give back just a little bit of what I've been given. Now I could probably talk Oh, I was going to tell you real quickly before I close that I just talked to a few of our kids the other day, and they said how they continue to recognize and cherish the blessings from getting to know a Christian science nurse, what a Christian science nurse is and what they do. Around the world, you're being a vessel. We've seen lots of healings in our home and many examples of protection. So maybe I can come back another day and give another talk, but if I'm invited. But I just wanted to say to you, thank you so much for being here today and listening. And I hope you have recognized that Christ light in you and how you are being a vessel too. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Libby. That was such a wonderful talk in the hearing impaired community. If people are muted, this is how you do your audio. Thank you. Uh, this is how you do your clapping. Thank but anyway, you. we can, uh, yeah, thank you. We will also unmute people. And if, or you can un allow, we will allow you to unmute yourselves for comments, questions, answers praises and any other inspiration you'd like to share or you gain from this talk and th that was just so full on and so wonderful with all those amazing healings that you shared so uh gabby will unmute people you can also raise your hand or gabby maybe we should just unmute everyone and then yeah. but not let everybody talk at the same time is that Robin wanting to talk? Okay, no. What are you doing? Oh. Can I ask a question of someone? No, sure. No. Can you identify yeah. yourself? Okay. I'm Nancy Schraber and Janet Martin. Are you the Janet Martin I grew up knowing from <laughs> Wilmington, Delaware? No, I grew up in Illinois. Okay. <laughs> This is like a reunion of sorts. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jen Ram. Great. Well, we're happy to connect everyone. We're not just networking. We love to connect people in this healing community. It's great, Paul Steve. So, anyone else? Hey, Libby. It's Hi. Jennifer Gordon here. So nice to see you. It's. I'm, I'm in a car with my friend Ed. We, we're having like a, a Starbucks car picnic and a lecture from Libby. <laughs> I love but it. I wanted, I wanted to tell you how beautiful your talk was and how um, it, it really uh, splashed me with the idea how simple love is and metaphysics oh. are and the way that you live that. I, I'm just so grateful. I'll be thinking about it and getting a lot out of it as I ponder it further. So thank you so much. 
Thank you okay, so much for, that... for listening and being here. And thank oh, you for your words, joy. for saying hi. <laughs> All right, everyone, that's yeah. Jennifer Ann Gordon, another Christian science practitioner from Davis, California. She was our one, um, a speaker a couple of months ago. You are welcome to listen to her talk on our website, highridgehouse.org. It's called Take Up Your Bed and Dance. Dance. It's also another wonderful talk. Uh, so we have a message from Leslie Riley. Thank you so much. What a beautiful message. And that's from, I believe, Poughkeepsie Church. Oh, nice. Thank you. I'm so grateful. And people are sending messages also via the chat. So that's oh, okay. pretty cool. I'm Rita Simmons from the, from the Richfield Church, and I wanted to thank you for arranging this uh, wonderful talk today and for the inspiration uh, that you have given us, Libby. It's very impressive and lovely, and uh, some of the ideas, I mean, I will keep working on it and thinking about it. I like the idea of, you know, identifying and to, to, to um, talk about how to protect yourself throughout the day. I thought that was just a wonderful, wonderful thought and uh, that we can all use. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marvick. Hey, thank you. Marita is our church representative from the Richfield, <laughs> Connecticut church. And if you ever want to be a representative for your church, mainly it just mm -hmm. means you're the main contact for different things for the High Ridge House. We more than welcome your participation and love for you to be part of the church rep family of High Ridge House. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maravik, are you guys wanting me to respond to anything in the chat? Or are you guys doing that? Okay, here's another one. Christine, I don't know. Christine's last name, maybe you could identify. So outstanding talk, Libby. Oops. Um, I plan. Thank you. I plan to share the recording of this talk with many people. Oh, it's Christine oh. Dreesen, CSB. Oh, thank you, thank Christine. You. That's so precious. Thank you. Former lecturer. Christine Dreesen. Yeah, Christine Dreesen is at the Poughkeepsie Church as well. Uh, Sharon mm -hmm. Simpson, thank you so much for this lovely talk. Such a help. And I'm not sure I remember where Sharon Simpson is from. <laughs> but you can tell us. And Ida Sanchez, who's a Christian science nurse out in California, just wrote, thanks for your being a vessel for all of us to be inspired today. Thank you, Ida, and thank you for thank your you. nursing service. Okay, Sharon <laughs> Simpson is from, I can't even pronounce this place in Illinois, Moakiwa, Moiaqua, Illinois. Okay, Joan Mickelson to everyone. I tune in late because the meeting maxed out at 100 participants. Will we be able to see the recording somewhere? Yes, we will post the recording sometime soon. Uh, on our website. And I apologize in advance. We're kind of new at this stuff. And this is the first time we had 100 people and more people coming on because we opened it up now to our entire database. So this was a beautiful indication of the recept receptive hearts out there. And I know some people, because of other things, shared it with their neighbors or people who are not even Christian scientists. And that's what we want. We want people to understand what Christian science is about. We're all about lifting the imposition of um, on Christian science, the public thought. Uh, Susan Teschke, thanks so much for the inspiring talk. Wonderful to see how many people attended. Susan, where are you from again? I kind of know that, but I'm not remembering at the moment. I'd like to say thank you very much. Great, Nancy Stevens. Nancy, yes, where are you from? Well, I'm in Missouri. Cool. Um, I can certainly relate to this wonderful story because I was a baby nurse uh, oh. many, many years ago and used to travel all over the country um, helping mommies with babies. Oh. So this was, uh, this kind of gave me goosebumps today. So oh. I thank you so much for giving this, this sweet talk uh, and encouraging more mommies to have babies at home. 
because mine Thank were you. all home deliveries. Thank you. And, you know, I love the, the fact that this is so transferable for anybody experiencing a, a, a big moment in their life or right. facing big challenges or anything. It's, these ideas are so transferable to anyone. Mm -hmm. And this just happened to be my experience. And it was a lovely talk. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Susan Teshke is from East Rochester. So there were others from, um, uh, from East Rochester, New York. And we're so happy that people from upstate New York were able to join because we know that they're kind of farther away. And uh, uh, so we are really happy for that outreach. Mm -hmm. And we have a Christian science practitioner teacher thanking you, Libby. Alice Sue oh. from Sacramento, Carmichael Church in Sacramento. Hi, Thank you for an inspiring and practical talk. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I want to thank everyone for all your prayers for this amazing talk. We've never had a hundred people and people wanting to come on. So it's That's been, so exciting. It's very exciting. It was the first time we just did an email blast to everybody so it's well I love the outreach you know reaching out and 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 just bringing people in okay know. someone just uh, wrote Haley Siska from Boston so grateful for this wonderful talk so glad I can listen to it from Boston can't wait to share this with my family oh and great. another Please. church rep Kate Williamson from um, 10th Church, New York City. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for this wonderful talk. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. So exciting. I'm excited and I'm just here behind my computer at work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marvik, this is Sylvia from oh, Germany. Yeah, Hi, Sylvia. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> I want to thank you for this amazing, inspiring talk. Thank you, Libby, and thank you for inviting me. And oh my gosh, this is so wonderful to be connected to my family. Mm, love you so much. Besito, grüße. Besitos. Mwah. Okay, so Sylvia Herzog is a Christian science practitioner from Germany. You can look her up in the journal and also... Uh, was she and I were part of a starting the Spanish services at the Mother Church. Oh, how fun. Thank you, Sylvia, for listening in, for watching. Thank you, Libby. Thank you. God bless you. Thank okay. you. I, another um, message from Christine Driesen. I was also born at home, and the Christian science nurse gave me a gift of the concordance, the writings of Mary Baker Eddy, and it was the perfect gift. So and great. In case you don't know, um, Christine Dreesen's mother was Eliz Ruth Elizabeth Jenks, Mrs. Je Betty Jenks, who was on the board of trustees of the uh, Mother Church. <laughs> oh, we have someone from the UK, Barbara Ann. What part of the nice. UK? This is amazing. This is fun seeing how, where everyone is. Yeah, we have a saying hi. Mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> we have a pretty good outreach to the world. It's lovely. I love it. Well, I guess if there's no more comments or questions, we just want to thank Libby again. We want to thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts here from High Reach House on behalf of all our patients, staff, our board of trustees. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much for tuning in. You can listen to this wonderful talk again, and we can all go forth and be vessels mm -hmm. as Libby has Thank inspired you. us to do. Yay. <laughs> Much love Thank to you. everyone and blessings to all. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>